Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. Monday Night Raw tonight was from the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri. And after coming off Clash at the Castle on Saturday, which was a very good show, we go into Monday Night Raw tonight, and Monday Night Raw, I thought the show was very mid, in my opinion. Not terrible, not anything to get excited about on the show tonight. But I said, just very mid show. But tonight we saw Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory. We also saw Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio. Aliyah and Raquel Rodriguez end up taking on Nikki, ASH, and Dewdrop. And we had the return of Braun Strowman tonight. Braun Strowman end up returning to Monday Night Raw tonight. And in the main event of the show tonight, we had a steel cage match and the United States Championship was on the line. Bobby Lashley defend the title against The Miz. But overall, Monday Night Raw, very mid-show, in my opinion. But anyways... Let's jump right into the review. My Night Raw opened up tonight on this Labor Day edition with Edge. Edge ended up making his way out. Got a big ovation, of course, from the crowd there in Kansas City. We saw the uh, replay of what we saw at Clash at the Castle. With Edge of Rey Mysterio taking on uh, Balor and Damian Priest the Judgment Day. And then we saw how Dominic turned heel, low blowed Edge. And then Dominic ended up clotheslining his father, Rey. So we saw you a know, recap of that, which took place at Clash at the Castle on Saturday. So Edge ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying, Dominic Mysterio. He wants to say that he's known Dominic since he was five years old. He ended up saying that he used to spend time with Dominic in catering. Edge ended up saying that he has been like family to the Mysterios. And he slept at their house when he was in San Diego. So Edge ended up saying that he calmed Dominic down last year before his very first match. Before a live audience. He kept saying that Dominic has been like a nephew to him. And that Dominic doesn't feel the same way. So Edge wanted to know what's going on. He kept saying that, oh, if Dominic turned on him at Clash at the Castle was all because of the spear. He kept saying that it was an accident a few weeks ago. So Edge ended up apologizing for that. So he ended up saying that his gut told him to take care of it, but his heart overrode his gut. Edge ended up saying that he didn't think he needed to worry about Dom. Edge ended up saying that he didn't come back to get between Dom and his father, Ray. Edge ended up saying that he is here to help them, and that Judgment Day is his fault and responsibility. He ended up saying that after what Dom did on Saturday, after what he did to him and his father, Edge ended up saying that he knows Ray raised Dominic better than that. So Edge ended up saying that he isn't looking at him like the kid he watched grow up. And now he's looking at Dominic as a superstar. A man's game pays a man's price. So Edge ended up calling out Dominic. And that they're not going to talk. Edge ended up saying that he's going to beat his ass. So the crowd got up to their feet. Edge demanded Dominic to come out to the ring. But Edge didn't get Dom. Edge got Ray. Ray Mysterio ended up coming out. Ray ended up looking very sad and heartbroken after what went down on Saturday. And Ray was motioning for Edge to calm down. 
Ray ended up telling Ed that he knows that Dominic messed up big. So Ray was asking for an apology on Dominic's behalf. He kept saying that Dominic is still his son. And Ray ended up begging Edge not to do this. Edge ended up saying that Ray knows that he loves him. But his son is old enough to drink, drive, and also step foot in the ring. You have saying that Dominic is old enough to stand for his actions. So Edge once again called out Dominic. But he didn't get Dominic. He ended up getting Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley ended up making her way out. And she's still on the stage. Rhea Ripley ended up telling Edge to calm down. And at Clash at the Castle, they both got exactly what was coming to them. He, she ended up saying that Edge thought he could replace Dominic, like it didn't even matter. She ended up saying that Ray thought he could protect Dominic, just because he was his baby boy. She ended up saying that the fact is that Dominic isn't his baby boy anymore. Rhea Ripley ended up saying that she saw the potential in Dominic, and made him into a man. So Dominic ended up walking out. Dominic was dressed in all black. He looked like he could be Damien Priest's son. And he looked like he was like a waiter. Also, He also looked like a waiter. Saying, oh, welcome to the 619. Uh, my name is Dominic. Can I take your order? So... The crowd ended up booing at Dominic. Ray ended up telling Dom to snap out of it and that he still has time. Ray begged Dominic to make amends with Edge and to make things right. Rhea Ripley ended up asking when Ray is going to get it through his thick skull and that Dominic isn't listen, listening to him anymore. And he, she ended up saying that Ray cannot fight his battles for him anymore. She ended up saying, as for Edge, he's past his time. And that Edge can't stop his judgment day. So we had a uh, who's your daddy chant uh, from the crowd. Rhea Ripley and Dominic end up making their way down to the ring. Ray ended up telling Edge to do what he has to do because he can't be part of this. Ray then left the ring and Ray ended up approaching his son, Dominic. Ray once again ended up begging Dom not to do this. So Dominic wasn't even looking at Ray. Dom was just staring straight ahead, not caring at what Ray was saying to him. So Ray ended up sadly walking off. Rhea Ripley laughed and she put her hand on Dominic's shoulder. Edge then ended up staring down at Dom and Rhea Ripley. And as Dominic ended up approaching the ring, Finn Balor and Damian Priest end up attacking Edge from behind. Edge managed to fight both Balor and Priest off. Dominic ended up coming into the ring and he chop blocked Edge. He took Edge down. And that's when Balor started to work on Edge's leg that Dominic ended up chop blocking him. Priest started stomping away at Edge. Ray then ended up charging down to the ring. Dominic and Rhea Ripley end up standing in Ray's way. Ray tried to get past his son Dom, but Dominic ended up throwing Ray back. And then Rhea Ripley ended up attacking Ray from behind. Rhea Ripley ended up whipping Ray into the ring steps. And we went back to the ring. Balor ended up throwing Edge into Damien Priest. Priest then ended up hitting the South of Heaven to Edge, and then Rhea Ripley ended up going under the ring, and she handed Dominic a chair. Dominic then handed the chair to Balor, and so Balor ended up attacking Edge's uh, knee that was injured, and he ended up putting the chair on Edge's knee. Priest ended up holding Edge down. Balor ended up going up to the top rope and hit the coup de grace onto the chair and Edge's knee. Edge started screaming in pain. Dominic walked off. 
with uh, Rhea Ripley, Damian Priest, and Finn Balor. Ray ended up checking on Edge in the ring. And we had a chant of Eddie's son to uh, Dominic. We heard a chant of, uh, you know, Eddie's son. And pretty much that was basically how the segment ended. But overall, this was a, a pretty good uh, segment to open My Night Raw. And, you know, Dominic is now part of Judgment Day. But overall, very good segment. And then we had Corey Graves and uh, Byron Saxton and Jimmy Smith. They have talked about how Edge has been taken to a medical facility. So we're using medical facility as a term for hospital again on WWE television. I thought we were done. I thought they were done saying about, oh, medical facility instead of saying hospital. This whole first hour, in my opinion, felt like Bruce Pritchard booked this show for the first hour. So they use a medical facility again instead of using hospital. And then we saw our footage of The Miz and Champa, which, by the way, Champa got his first name back. So they're calling now Tommaso Champa again. Which is good. So we got Matt Riddle, Austin Theory, Tommaso Champ again, their names back. Hopefully next we can have Pete Dunn uh, have his name again instead of calling him fucking Butch. Hopefully Pete Dunn is next. And we have to announce him as Butch. So the Miz and Champa, they end up walking into the arena earlier in the day. Sarah Schreiber end up asking the Miz what happened last Monday, where it appeared someone was in the back seat, which we all knew it was Dexter Loomis. So Miz ended up saying that he doesn't want to talk about it. So Sarah Schreiber ended up asking if that's why he challenged Bobby Lashley to a steel cage match later on in the night to keep Dexter Loomis out. Champa ended up shushing Sarah Schreiber and she ended up saying that journalists are always trying to stir things up. Miz ended up saying that no one ever asks how he is doing. So Sarah Schreiber ended up asking the Miz how he is doing. And Miz ended up telling her it's none of her business. So Miz and Champa walked off and they stopped. And they ended up approaching a car. And the car was flipped over. Making us know that Braun Strowman is returning tonight. So that was pretty much basically that. You know, more of this Miz and Dexter Loomis uh, stuff. And then we had a number one contenders Fatal Four Way tag team match, where the winners will be the number one contender for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship, and they will face the Usos. So we had the New Day versus the Alpha Academy versus Los Lotharios versus the Street Profits. And this was a good match here. So we had Xavier Woods and Angel Garza end up starting off the match. Xavier Woods and Angel end up going back and forth in the ring. We had Angel end up pulling his pants off, tagged in Kofi Kingston. Kofi looked confused because, you know, it's a fatal four-way tag team match. And they could tag in another uh, person of a team to come in. So we had Xavier Woods end up dropping down. He was going to let Kofi pin uh, him so they could win and then everyone end up uh, running into the ring to break it up the new day end up clearing everybody in the ring and they end up hitting uh, stereo punches to the outside and then as my night raw came back from the commercial 
Humberto was shown applying a, can you guess what the, what the name of this hold is? Did you say chin lock? There you go. Typical WWE formulaic uh, match where you got to have a chin lock locked in to slow down the pace of the match. So Humberto applied the chin lock to Montez Ford. Ford ended up fighting up. Humberto ended up delivering a forearm to Ford, to which Humberto connected with a back suplex to Ford, and then he kipped up. Humberto ended up knocking the New Day off the apron, and he ended up ducking an inseguri from Montez Ford. Chad Gable ended up blind tagging in, and he ended up clipping Montez Ford's knee. Humberto ended up charging in, and Chad Gable ended up accidentally hitting him. Dawkins tagged in. He ended up taking Gable down with some clotheslines. Dawkins then punched Otis off the apron, and he ended up hitting Gable with a leaping back elbow. We had Ford end up hitting a somersault senton onto you know, the rest of the guys on the outside. So the Street Profits end up hitting Chad Gable with a throw in, into a back suplex, and we had Ford end up going for the cover. Otis ended up breaking up the pin. Otis ended up taking in, and he lift Montez Ford up. Angel then ended up delivering a super kick to Otis. Xavier Woods ran in, and Montez Ford and Angel ended up attacking Xavier Woods in the corner. They ended up putting him up on the top rope. Kofi Kingston and Angel Dawkins ended up putting Humberto on the top rope. In another corner, and Kofi Kingston hit Dawkins with a Sunset Flip Power Bomb, uh, which looked good. And then Angel and Montez Ford ended up hitting Xavier Woods with a double superplex, also which looked good. Humberto then ended up going to hit Montez Ford with a moonsault, and Ford ended up getting his feet up. Gable then ended up hitting Humberto with a German suplex. Otis then ended up going up to the second rope. And he ended up delivering a splash to Montez Ford. And Otis ended up going for the cover. Kofi ended up breaking up the pin. So Montez Ford ended up getting out of a slam from Otis as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial. Ford then ended up hitting a jawbreaker to Otis. Chad Gable tagged in. Montez Ford ended up hitting Otis with a scoop slam. And he went up to the top rope. Los Adarios ended up attacking Montez Ford. New Day then end up attacking uh, Angel and Berto. Angel and Berto end up hitting some of uh, the guys with uh, moon salts out to the floor. Ford end up hitting Otis with a frog splash, but Chad Gable was, of course, the legal man in the match. Chad Gable end up grabbing Montez Ford and applied the ankle lock. And then we had the return of Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman ended up coming out, and he was wearing these red pants. He was, you know, shirtless. Strowman ended up stepping over the top rope, and he ended up approaching Chad Gable. Strowman then ended up running over Chad Gable with a clothesline. Angel ended up running in. Strowman ended up punching Angel down. Strowman then ended up hitting Humberto with a choke slam, And Strowman ended up knocking Otis off the apron. Strowman was looking around, and the crowd gave him a big ovation. Security then ended up running into the ring. Strowman ended up taking the security out. Strowman then grabbed one of the guards and ended up delivering a power bomb uh, to one of the uh, security guards. So Strowman was signaling for the Strowman Express. For him to run over his opponents with his, you know, arm. So as Strowman was going to do that, he was going to uh, hit uh, Chad Gable. He ended up tripping. He botched and tripped. And he quickly got back up to his feet. And he ended up knocking Otis through the barricade. So Dawkins ended up getting taken down before Strowman ended up slamming Chad Gable down on the floor. Strowman then cleared the commentary table, and he ended up lifting Dawkins up. Strowman then ended up hitting Dawkins with a run and power slam through the commentary table. Strowman then ended up posing for the crowd. He got back into the ring, and he posed on the turnbuckles, 
And the match ended in a no contest because of Braun Strowman, you know, returning. But I thought this was a very awful way to bring back Braun Strowman here. I mean, we have a number one contenders match where the team goes to face the Usos for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. And then WWE goes and has Braun Strowman come out there and just take out you know, the, the, the tag teams that are in the match. I mean, was this really necessary? Was this necessary to destroy the entire tag team division? I'm like, who thought this was a good idea? And are you all happy that Braun Strowman is back? I know I ain't. I wasn't hyped about this. And WWE said, oh, they're bringing back Braun Strowman and they're going to bring back Braun Breaker. I would rather see Braun Breaker come back than Braun Strowman. I guess control your narrative to which Braun Strowman was in wasn't working out well. So there you go. Braun Strowman is back in WWE. But what a terrible way to bring him back and destroy the entire division, the entire take team division. I mean, like I said, was this really all necessary? We had no contest for this match. This was a number of contenders, fatal four-way tag team match to determine who would face the Usos for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. So, looks like we're going to be getting a rematch of this. And then, during the uh, the picture-in-picture, because Monday Night Raw uh, did picture-in-picture tonight, where you have the the commercial on the right-hand side and what's going on uh, during the commercial on the left-hand side, Braun Strowman was still... In the ring, he was still uh, posing. Strowman then ended up grabbing Chad Gable, gave him a run and power slam in the ring. So, and then when Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, Braun Strowman ended up leaving to go to the back. And that was that. And then we had Smiley Raquel, you know, Colgate girl, Raquel Rodriguez. And Aaliyah, the new women's tag team champions, to which WWE on their social media said, oh, it makes one week already that Aaliyah and Raquel are the women's tag team champions. And they put that, they wrote that I'm like, who cares? Who cares if it's been a week? These women's tag team titles are absolutely meaningless. You know, Raquel and Aaliyah are only holding the titles until Sasha and Naomi come back. And then we're going to get Sasha and Naomi versus Aaliyah and Raquel for the women's tag team titles. And Sasha and Naomi are going to be the new women's tag team champions. That's all, that's all why WWE end up putting the titles on Aaliyah and Raquel. So we had a tag team match. Raquel Arias and Aaliyah versus Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop. Very boring. Absolutely boring. So Aaliyah and Nikki end up starting off. Aaliyah end up taking Nikki down. End up going for the cover. And Nikki end up kicking out. So that on commentary... They end up talking about how Aaliyah didn't do much during the tournament, which is true. And Raquel had to do all the heavy lifting. It's basically true. Aaliyah didn't do anything during the tournament. The tournament was a complete waste of fucking time in general. So Dewdrop then tagged in. Aaliyah ended up drop kicking Dewdrop in the knee. Dewdrop ended up taking uh, Aaliyah down, ended up knocking Smiley Raquel off the apron. Aaliyah ended up going for her Karana, and then Dewdrop ended up powering Aaliyah up, ended up slingshotting her into the turnbuckles. 
you know, we saw Bailey Dakota Kai and EO Sky, you know, damage control, as what they're being called. They were watching the match backstage. And so, at the end of the match, Smiley Raquel end up grabbing Dewdrop off the ropes and hit the Tahana Bomb on Dewdrop. And she ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Raquel Rodriguez, Smiley Raquel, and Aaliyah ended up winning the match. Who cares? Who cares? You know, like I said, Raquel and Aaliyah are only the women's tag team champions until Sasha and Naomi end up returning. These women tag team titles, they should have been retired. I don't know why it was a good idea for Triple H to just keep the women's tag team titles and do a tournament out of it. I don't understand. I'll never understand why Triple H decided that it was a good idea to have a tournament. If I was booking everything creative, I would have just retired these titles. And I would have retired the 24-7 title, to which the 24-7 title, thank God, is not being on TV. Thank you, Triple H, for that. And it's only being uh, shown at house shows. Good. Good. Keep them on house shows. So then we saw Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber was with Rey Mysterio. Rey ended up telling Sarah Schreiber that he'll have a word in private with his son, Dominic. He ended up saying that the Judgment Day has been tearing his life apart. And they're taking away his son. And they took Edge, who was like family to him. Ray ended up saying that he will never lay hands on his son. But the Judgment Day deserves to get their asses beat. So Ray ended up challenging either Finn Balor or Damian Priest to a match later on in the night. So they can figure out who. And obviously, it was Damian Priest. So it was Ray Mysterio versus Damian Priest later on. And then we had Austin Theory. Austin Theory ended up making his way out to the ring. The crowd ended up booing the hell out of him. And he was still shown holding his jaw after being punched by Tyson Fury at Clash of the Castle on Saturday, where he just knocked Theory out. So Theory got on the mic. He ended up seeing that things didn't go as planned on Saturday. But Crown Jewel was an absolute success. And Theory ended up saying, oh, I'm just kidding because it's Clash at the Castle. So Theory was upset. He was yelling at the crowd to shut their mouths. And he was adjusting his jaw. So he ended up saying that everyone wanted to see him fail as cash in. But he's still the youngest Money in the Bank winner in WWE history. He ended up saying that the difference between him and the people is when he gets knocked down, he gets back up. Even against a boxer like Tyson Fury. He ended up saying that Roman Reigns is still the champion, but he's glad he's actually glad he is. He ended up saying for once, Drew McIntyre completely embarrassed himself in front of his friends and family. He ended up saying that second, him and Roman have unfinished business. So Theory ended up tripping over his words. He started grabbing his jaw. He ended up saying that he'll soon end Roman's two-year reign as undisputed WWE Universal Champion. And that he will be the champion. So then Kevin Owens ended up coming out. Kevin Owens ended up coming out to the stage. Owens ended up asking, what's wrong with your jaw to Austin Theory? Owens then ended up remembering that Theory got knocked the hell out. And then we heard a You Got Knocked Out chant from the crowd there to Austin Theory. And then Owens ended up saying that Theory got KO'd. And then a You Got KO'd chant from the crowd started you know, going. Kevin Owens ended up smiling. 
He ended up saying that he just realized that he found his first name again. That wasn't there. He just found his first name again. So Owens ended up saying that he can call him Austin now. So he ended up saying that they've had some arrogant and delusional people in WWE. And that he despises arrogant and delusional people in this industry. So he ended up saying that currently... Theory is at the top of that list. You have seen a great example of how delusional he is, is Austin Theory complaining about Tyson Fury. You have seen that if he didn't do that at Clash at the Castle, he'd have been buried by Roman or Drew McIntyre. Theory ended up saying that Owens is just jealous. So Owens was talking about championships and that he hasn't won one in years. Theory ended up saying that he's climbing the ladder of success and doing things Kevin Owens never could do, like win money in the bank. So he ended up saying that Owens can be first in line when he catches in and wins the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Kevin Owens then ended up asking if Austin Theory wants to know he'd be destroyed by Reigns and McIntyre. So Owens ended up knowing what it's like to be in the ring with them. He ended up saying that he would be in McIntyre a few weeks ago if it wasn't for the Usos. And that 18 months ago, he had Reigns beaten. And that he should have been the champion. But the Usos and Paul Heyman ensured that he didn't end the reign in six months. So Kevin Owens ended up saying that the only reason that Theory has the briefcase right now is that he wasn't in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Owens ended up saying that if he was in it, he'd have slammed Theory through a ladder and won the briefcase. To which Austin Theory ended up saying, oh, that sounds like a fantasy. Theory ended up saying that he's the hand-picked future of this company, while Kevin Owens is just trying to stay relevant. Kevin Owens ended up admitting to doing what he can to stay relevant, which is why he's great. So Owens ended up wondering if he's the only one who knows what is going to happen. So a referee was going to run down to the ring. A referee ended up run down to the ring. Kevin Owens ended up saying that someone will then challenge him to a fight. So Owens ended up slamming the mic down. And we got Austin Theory versus Kevin Owens. Which this was a good match. So the bell ended up ringing. Theory immediately ended up getting out of the ring. Owens then left the ring, ended up taking Austin Theory down at ringside. He ended up chopping at Theory, and he ended up putting Theory back into the ring. Theory ended up attacking Kevin Owens as he got into the ring, started stomping away at him. Theory then ended up putting Kevin Owens in the corner, started kicking away at him. So Owens then ended up getting back up, he ended up clotheslining Theory down. And then Owens ended up hitting a cannonball to Theory in the corner. Theory ended up rolling out of the ring to recover. Owens ended up going to the apron. And he hit a frog splash to Theory on the floor. And as Mike and I Raw came back from the commercial, Austin Theory ended up having Kevin Owens trapped in a chin lock. And then Owens ended up fighting up. Theory ended up kicking Owens in his midsection. Theory then ended up throwing Owens out of the ring. Theory followed him out to the outside. Owens ended up reversing the whip into the barricade to Theory. Owens then ended up bouncing Theory off the commentary table. He ended up putting Theory back into the ring. Owens connected with a clothesline and ended up flattening Theory with a senton splash. Owens ended up going for the cover and Theory ended up kicking out at two. Owens was going for a scoop slam on Theory. Theory ended up sliding off and Theory ended up hitting a drop toe hold. To Kevin Owens into the turnbuckles. Theory then connected with a rolling thunder drop kick to uh, Kevin Owens. He ended up going for the cover. Owens kicked out a two. And Theory ended up putting the chin lock back on Kevin Owens. So Theory ended up hitting Kevin Owens with a fall away slam and for a near fall. Theory ended up applying an arm bar. Kevin Owens ended up fighting up. He ended up forearming. Out of the armbar. 
So Theory ended up quickly kicking at Owens, but Owens ended up reversing a whip. And then Kevin Owens ended up lowering his head, ended up eating a kick from Theory. And then he ended up responding to Theory with a clothesline. Owens then ended up hitting a second clothesline to Theory. Theory ended up knocking Kevin Owens back down, but Owens ended up sending him out of the ring with a third clothesline. Kevin Owens then ended up going for a swanton bomb off the apron. But Theory ended up getting his knees up. And it looked like it hurt Kevin Owens bad. You know, with Theory he ended up getting his knees up. So, at the end of the match, Kevin Owens ended up sending Theory into the ropes. Ended up crushing Theory with a pop-up powerbomb. And then Owens ended up following up with the stunner. And he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Kevin Owens ended up winning the match. Post-match, Owens ended up posing on the turnbuckle. And he ended up shouting that this is the Kevin Owens show. So that was basically that. But overall, this was a good match from Kevin Owens and Austin Theory. You know, good wrestling from uh, the both of them. And then we had The Miz. The Miz was talking with Champa backstage. Sarah Shriver ended up coming up from behind. And she startled The Miz. Miz ended up saying that he's not talking about the man whose name shall not be mentioned. Of course, it's Dexter Loomis. Champ ended up saying that Miz is facing Bobby Lashley in a steel cage match. Because he wants to prove that he's better than Bobby Lashley. And it's not to keep out... Who shall not be named? Miz ended up saying that he's faced persecution throughout his career and has always proved the doubters wrong. And he ended up saying that tonight will be no different. So that was basically that. A little backstage you know, interview with Miz. And then we saw damage control. This is Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky. They end up making their way down to the ring. Bailey got on the mic and she ended up saying, Ding dong, hello idiots. She ended up saying that it is them, the three women who were victorious at Clash at the Castle when they end up beating Asuka, Alexa Bliss, and Bianca Belair. Dakota Kai got on the mic. She ended up saying that if they can do that to their best, imagine what they can do to the rest of the uh, women's division. So she ended up saying that they are taking control. And then EO Sky speaks in Japanese. She ended up saying that they will be taking the women's tag team titles. Dakota Kai ended up saying that she wasn't legal last week. And that Raquel and Aaliyah can pretend to be champions for another week. Until they take what is rightfully theirs. Bailey went, then went on to say that they persevered through that unfair decision and that she pinned Bianca. Bailey I'm saying that she is the first person to beat Bianca in almost 300 days. So then Bianca Belair ended up coming out. Bianca I'm saying that Bailey may have gotten the best of her at Clash at the Castle, but she put her pride to the side to show up tonight. She ended up saying that if Bailey wants a challenge, they can have a match right now. So Bailey ended up saying Shush, please. Hey, what, is she spending too much time with Chad Gable? That she has to say, shush, please. God. So she ends up saying that it's Labor Day. So she's not working today. So she ends up saying that all they're doing is celebrating that she ended up beating Bianca. So Bianca ended up looking confused. And she ends up saying that the last time she checked, it took the three of them to take her down. If that's what it takes to make Bailey feel like she's in control, then that's fine. So Bianca got into the ring. She ended up saying that Bailey might have her little minions, but she has the gold. Bianca then ended up holding up the title. And she ended up saying that unless it's one on one, and unless she's got this title, Bailey is in control of nothing. So damage control ended up surrounding uh, Bianca before they ended up walking off. Bianca ended up laughing. Bailey ended up saying that she already beat Bianca. 
and that she has nothing else to prove. She has seen that it's been a long time since they've seen each other. Bailey wants to say that she's still the same Bianca trying to play Miss Perfect, but her fragile ego cannot handle this one loss. So Bianca ended up wanting to challenge Bailey to make herself feel like it's just a fluke, but it's not all about her. Bailey ended up saying that they've got better things to do, like her girls winning the women's tag team titles next week. So that was basically that. So overall, this segment was just meh, in my opinion. So the next uh, challenger for Bianca Belair for the World Women's Championship is going to be Bailey. So we'll get Bailey versus Bianca for the World Women's Championship. And then we saw Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber was interviewing Johnny Gargano, Johnny Wrestling. Sarah Schreiber ended up asking Gargano about Austin Theory's comments that Gargano is swimming with the Sharks. Gargano ended up saying that Theory may have forgotten what he can do in the ring, but he'll show them. Theory ended up saying that nobody cares. So, he ended up saying that since Gargano came back, all he's done is talk. And that he should be Johnny talking. Gargano ended up saying that Theory is 100% correct. He ended up saying before he was really interrupted, he was going to announce that next week on Raw, he will return to action. So Gargano ended up telling Theory to be careful of the Sharks. So, pretty much, that was basically that. So, Johnny Organo is returned to the ring next week on Raw in a match. So That's awesome. And then we had Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest. This was a good match here. The match ended up starting with Rey Mysterio going after Damian Priest. Mysterio ended up avoiding a boot from Damian Priest. He started punching away at uh, Damian Priest. Mysterio ended up getting out of the south of heaven, but Priest ended up booting Mysterio down. Priest ended up punching Mysterio in the corner, and he ended up headbutting Mysterio. Priest ended up whipping Mysterio into the turnbuckle. He continued to attack Mysterio, ended up knocking him out of the ring. Priest followed him out, ended up grabbing uh, Mysterio. Priest ended up delivering a forearm and he ended up putting Mysterio back into the ring. Mysterio ended up stumbling into the corner and Priest ended up booting uh, Mysterio back. Priest ended up responding with a right hand. So Priest ended up whipping Mysterio into the corner, started charging at him, but he ended up hitting his shoulder. Priest ended up hitting his shoulder into the ring post because Mysterio ended up moving. Mysterio ended up going to the apron, and he started kicking away at Damian Priest. Mysterio ended up hitting a springboard cross body block, ended up punching away at Priest. Priest ended up kneeing Mysterio, ended up sending him into the ring ropes. Mysterio ended up sliding through uh, Damian Priest's legs, started punching away at him. Priest ended up going for whip, but Mysterio ended up holding onto the ropes. Priest ended up kicking uh, Ray hard in the ribs. Priest ended up whipping Mysterio back into the ropes. Mysterio ended up holding on. So we had Dominic end up making his way to ringside alongside Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. Mysterio ended up diving off the apron. And Priest ended up forearming Ray out of midair. So now as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, Priest ended up having Mysterio in the chin lock. And... We had Balor and Rhea Ripley and Dominic were watching from ringside. We had Mysterio end up fighting out, end up kicking Damian Priest in the head. So Mysterio, later on, he was looking back at Dominic. Dominic was showing no remorse or acknowledgement to his father. Mysterio ended up climbing the ropes to punch Damian Priest. Priest ended up countering by uh, darting Mysterio into the turnbuckles. Priest ended up super kicking Ray down, ended up going for a cover, and Ray ended up kicking out at two. So later on, we saw Dominic was pacing that ringside, and 
Mysterio and that drop kicking Priest into the ropes. He ended up going for the 619. Priest ended up moving. The Priest ended up wiping Mysterio out with a kick. Priest ended up setting up for the Crucifix Powerbomb, but Mysterio ended up counting that into a Hurricanrana. Mysterio then ended up hitting the ropes. Dominic ended up standing in his way. So Mysterio ended up attacking Balor again on the apron. And we had uh, Rhea Ripley sliding into the ring. And Priest ended up taking Mysterio down with a clothesline. And then Priest ended up planting uh, Ray with the South of Heaven. And he ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Damian Priest ended up winning the match. So post-match, Dominic ended up showing some emotion by letting out a smirk at what happened to his father. Rhea Ripley then got on the mic and she ended up saying that now that Damian Priest is done with Ray, there's just one more man left in the way. So it was Edge, of course. Do she ended up saying that Dominic will send Edge back into retirement. She ended up saying that what Poppy wants, Poppy gets. So she ended up saying that's why Dominic will set up the challenge next week to go one on one with Edge. So that was that. But overall, very good match from Damian Priest and uh, Rey Mysterio. And then we had Sarah Schreiber. Sarah Schreiber was backstage with Bobby Lashley, the United States champion. Sarah Schreiber ended up saying to Bobby Lashley that Miz ended up saying that he would beat him tonight inside the steel cage. Lashley ended up saying that isn't very wise. He ended up saying that Miz thinks being in a steel cage will save him from Dexter Loomis. But he'll be in the cage with the most dangerous man in WWE. He ended up saying that when that door closes, he'll need to worry about being in the ring with the Almighty. So that was basically what Bobby Lashley had to say. And then we saw Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman was walking backstage... Strowman ended up saying that the monster of all monsters is back and that no one is safe. So Strowman ended up saying that he'll see everyone this Friday on SmackDown. So there you go. Braun Strowman's going to be on SmackDown on Friday. And then they announced that next week on Raw, it's going to be Raquel Rodriguez and Aaliyah defending the women's tag team titles against Dakota Kai and E.L. Sky. So we're seeing that next week. We're also going to see the in-ring return of Johnny Gargano. Who will be Gargano's opponent? I have to say, maybe it will be Ciampa. Maybe it will be Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. That would be very good because when they were in NXT, their feud was one of the best feuds in NXT and the best feud that WWE has ever produced. I think it's going to be Champa. So we'll maybe get Johnny Gargano versus Champa next week on Raw. And I hope that's the case. And then it will be Dominic Mysterio versus Edge. So we'll see if we get that match because you know Edge's condition from earlier in the night is you know very unknown. Where they end up saying that he was taken to a medical facility. So the match happens next week. You know, Edge is probably going to destroy Dominic. Or maybe Dominic wins the match, which we all know is probably going to happen because it'll be Balor, Priest, and Rhea Ripley helping out Dominic get a win. They're going to distract Edge, and then Dominic's going to pick up the win. So that's how I see that going next week. Main event, steel cage match for the United States Championship, The Miz versus Bobby Lashley. The Miz was accompanied by Champa, of course. This was a good match here. So Miz ended up stealing the United States Championship from the referee. He ended up smashing Lashley in the back of the head with the championship. Miz ended up 
punching Lashley out of the ring. And Champ ended up joining in on that. They knocked Lashley out of the cage because, of course, the match had not yet started. So Miz and Champa ended up sending Lashley into the cage. They sent Lashley into the cage again. Miz ended up grabbing the ring steps. Champa started holding uh, Lashley's arm against the ring post. Miz ended up dri- driving the uh, steps into Lashley's arm. Like Lashley's uh, arm, I guess, was in like a uh, thing to like hold it. And then uh, Miz ended up coming at uh, Lashley's arm with the, uh, the, the ring steps. So Lashley was selling the uh, ring step uh, hit for, on his arm. So the match was apparently official, uh, I guess, during the picture-in-picture uh, commercial break. So Miz ended up covering. He picked up the near fall because Bobby Lashley kicked out. Miz ended up hitting the ropes, ended up hitting a boot to Lashley's face, ended up going for a cover, and Lashley ended up kicking out. Miz started to climb the cage, but Lashley ended up pulling him down, ended up hitting a clothesline to the Miz. Lashley ended up making his way to the cage wall, but he, of course he was selling the uh, arm injury, you know, with the Miz, you know, hitting the ring steps into uh, his arm, into Lashley's arm. So Miz ended up charging, but Lashley ended up elbowing Miz back. Miz ended up getting out of a suplex, and he ended up taking uh, Bobby Lashley down, by his injured arm. Miz then ended up hitting the uh, it kicks to uh, to Bobby Lashley's arm. So Miz ended up going to the cage door. He nearly ended up getting out of the cage, but Lashley ended up pulling him back in. So we had Miz end up scaling the cage wall. Lashley ended up grabbing him with his uh, good arm and up pulling the Miz down. So Miz looked like he might have uh, twisted his knee on the way down from that spot. So we had later on, Lashley started to climb out of the cage. Champ ended up grabbing a chair. He was hidden into the cage a few times to prevent Lashley from climbing out of the cage. So Miz ended up hitting a knee kick to Bobby Lashley and going for the cover, to which Lashley kicked out too. So as Mike and I Raw came back from the commercial, Miz End up having Lashley trapped in the cross face. Lashley fought up. End up having Miz on his shoulders. So later on, Lashley ended up climbing. End up pulling the Miz down. Champ ended up trying to climb up and pull the Miz out. But of course, Champa was unsuccessful at that. Lashley ended up pulling Miz down onto the rope. And Lashley ended up hitting him with a superplex. So Lashley ended up slowly getting to his feet. He was waiting for the Miz to get up. Lashley was going for the spear. Miz sidestepped and ended up driving him into the cage. Miz hit the skull crushing finale onto Lashley. He ended up going for the cover. And Lashley kicked out. Miz then ended up beginning to crawl toward the uh, cage wall. Lashley ended up pulling onto Miz's feet and he ended up pulling the Miz back in. Champa then ended up slamming the door into Lashley's face and Lashley ended up blocking it. Lashley then ended up swinging the door into Champa's face. And the Miz ended up pulling the door into Lashley's head. Smashed him with the door a few times. And Miz ended up recognizing the opportunity. He started to climb the cage. Miz climbed to the top of the cage. And he looks down. And he sees Dexter Loomis lying on the floor. And the Miz was shocked. And he was scared. And the Miz ended up climbing back to the ring. Loomis emerged from under the ring. Miz started shouting at Dexter Loomis and he turned and Lashley hit Miz with the spear. Lashley ended up going for the cover and there you go. Bobby Lashley ended up winning the match retaining the United States Championship. Post-match, Dexter Loomis climbed up the cage and he got into the ring. The Miz was terrified and he started to crawl towards the cage door. Bobby Lashley then shut the door on the Miz And Miz was stunned in there with Dexter Loomis. Loomis then grabbed the Miz, ended up locking in the Anaconda Vice, putting the Miz to sleep. And that was how My Night Raw went off the air. Overall, 
very good match, very good steel cage match, and who knows where they're taking this Miz and Dexter Loomis story. And where was Champa during all this? I think Champa is helping Dexter Loomis and just taking out the Miz. You know, I think Champa is working with uh, Dexter Loomis because he wasn't there. Champa wasn't there when Dexter Loomis climbed into the cage and locked in the Anaconda Vice on the Miz. So pretty much is Champa is helping out Dexter Loomis. But overall, My Night Raw, very mid-show, in my opinion, wasn't the best Raw. Anyways, that's it for the Monday Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all Wednesday for AEW Dynamite. So, see you all then.